Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Last time, we did a whole bunch of algebra, and we derived these equations. These will give us the x and y steps for any arbitrary value that we want to linearly interpolate across the face of the triangle. And in this video, we're going to be using these equations to give our triangle a little bit more flavor. Rather than just having a flat white triangle, we're going to interpolate a bit of color across the triangle between all the vertices. So with that, let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a new field in our vertex class, a private vector 4f for the color. And I'm going to change our constructor so that we don't just have x and y values anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We're going to have just taking in a position and taking in a color. So in color is going to become color, and it'll be as simple as that. And I'll have a public vector 4f get color, which returns in color. And there. So now we can get the color of our vertex. This also means we're going to need to change this constructor right here so that we pass in m color, but that's okay. And also here we're going to need to pass in m color again. But again, that's not really a huge issue. Other than that, that's all we need to really change in our vertex class. And I went ahead and updated our vertices off screen because it's really simple, just wrapping the values we had in the vector 4f with the last parameter as 1, that's important. And I also added a new vector 4f for the color. And the way I did it now is I just made r, g, and b. So there. That's all we need to do. So now, let's go ahead and let's implement the gradients class. And this class is just going to encapsulate all this gradient mathematics we did in the last video. So right now, the only thing we need gradients for is the color. So I'm going to create a private vector 4f array for m color. And we're also going to have this is going to store the color at each vertex. And we're also going to have one more, or two more, excuse me, vector 4Fs. One for m color x step, and one for m color y step. Because these are, this is ultimately what our gradients are calculating. So, now I'm going to have constructor, and my constructor is going to be public gradients. It's going to take in nothing in particular. Well, okay, I suppose you can... It doesn't matter where exactly you do this, so I'm just going to do it here. So I'm going to take in the vertices. Min y vert, vertex. Mid y vert, vertex. Max y vert. So yeah, just going to take in all our vertices. And it's going to say whoops, in color, of course, is going to be initialized to new vector 4f array of size 3, because we're going to have one for each of the vertices. And then we're going to have to start applying these equations. To make our lives a little bit simpler, I went ahead and wrote out the denominator of this equation, dx, off screen, just so you don't have to sit and see me type this out for two minutes of video time. So, this is just directly implementing this denominator equation using, well, our min, mid, and max yvert, where min yvert is has x0, mid yvert has x1, max yvert has x2, and so forth and so on. And, like our equation right here says, we can have float 1 over dy, and that'll just be negative 1 over d x. So there, that sets up our base equations for calculating the gradients. 
Now we're going to need to sort of initialize these color values. So color sub zero is min y vert dot get color. And same sort of thing for one and two. So mid and max. And you'll see why I'm moving it to an array here in just a moment. Now, just to save some video time, I went ahead and I wrote out the numerator of this dc over dx equation off screen. So, yeah, this is just the numerator of this equation, except I wrote it out off screen, so you don't have to see me spend who knows how long typing that out. And there. So, with. I'm sorry, I'm just reorganizing. That doesn't affect the code at all. But, anyways. So, now we have dc and 1 over dx. Our x step is dc over dx, and our y step is dc over dy. So, it should be pretty simple to calculate this now. We do dc times 1 over dx for the x step, and y step is dc times 1 over dy. And there, that should be everything we need to do in our gradients for now. This is the basic process we're doing to, well, actually I should probably call this decolor just to make it a little bit more general, because, you know, we can have other interpolants. But yeah, this is the basic setup of our gradients that will allow us to interpolate this across the face of a triangle. And I went ahead and I created getters for everything off screen. The only tricky part is for color, I have an int location so you can specify what index in the color array you want returned. Also, while I was off screen, I realized that color and stuff is a vector. So I can't use a minus sign for subtraction or an asterisk for multiplication. I actually have to use the vector dot sub and dot mol operations. But it's doing the exact same logic, this exact same upper part of the equation. Only difference is syntax, really. And yeah, so updated that. Now, let's go to Edge, and let's go ahead and add some color variables to this, so that we can start stepping with that. So I'm going to have a private vector 4f for M color and private vector 4f for M color step. And gonna have public vector 4f get color, which returns M color, and public vector 4f. Actually, yeah, that's all I want. So we can get the color at any particular instance. And I'll put it at the end just so it's somewhat consistent. And there. So, we're also going to need to update the constructor, because we're going to need the gradients here. So, gradients, which is called gradients. And I'm also going to have some int top, which is, well, the location of, how about this? Min y vert index. So this will be the location of min y vert in the gradients array, or gradients' color array. So there. And with that, we're actually going to need one more variable in our whole setup here. We're going to need an x pre-step now. For the same reason we need the y pre-step. When we do this truncation of the x variable, or when we truncate it, it ends up at a slightly different location than, well, than it was initially. So we're going to need to adjust for that. So, this will just be our x position minus min y vert dot get x. So however much that changed, that's our x step. That's how much we've offset with our proper position setting. So, with that, I'm going to have, well, I'm going to initialize our color variable. So this is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be our gradients dot get color at our min y vert index. So there, but it needs to be adjusted for our truncating and shifting and adjusting for fill conventions on our x and y stuff, our x and y positions. So it's going to be this, and I'm going to add 
our radiance dot get color x well I'll start with y step why not doesn't matter but I'll start with y step our get color y step times our y pre step we're going to take that and then we're going to add that to radiance dot get color x step times or dot mole x pre step and I think yeah okay and that's all we need to do so this will properly take into account x and y pre steps based on the color x and y step we got from our gradients and I'll use the proper color now you might be wondering why am I using gradients dot get color at this index rather than just using min y vert dot get color and the reason I'm doing that is because in more advanced interpolation techniques we might not necessarily be interpolating something that comes directly as one of the vertex properties so this just this is just a nice convention to get into or a nice habit to get into that will scale into that it might not be the absolute perfect way to do it but I found it works reasonably well so there and now yeah sure it doesn't matter how much I damn that so now finally we need color step and you might be wondering well how are we gonna have a color step if we have both a y and x step well remember when we're stepping along the edge we're moving one unit in y and x step units in x so yeah this will work we just need our gradients dot y step because we're moving one unit in y that's how much we move per unit in y and we're gonna add our gradients dot color x step times our m x step and there so now all we have to do is in our step we say m color equals m color dot add m color step and this should step our color down the vertex at or down the edge so now let's actually put the code into use but first there's a few things I've just made minor typos on for vertex it should be vector 4f color not vector 3f color in gradients here I was doing stuff like midyvert.get position dot get x we don't need to do that so just use directly dot get y dot get x and stuff and that'll work just fine and there so now let's go to render context to scan triangle and let's create our gradients so gradients gradients new gradients and they're gonna take in all our vertices so min y vert mid y vert and max y vert and the order is important so make sure that's in order and now well all our edges take in gradients now so we can go ahead and change that and they take in the index of it so min y vert is index 0 so those two can be 0 mid y vert is index 1 so that's 1 and max y vert is index 2 but we're not really using that as a start vertex so we don't need it and there so now if I build and run if everything has gone correctly yeah we should just have the same triangle as before but now we're interpolating some color down the edge so rather than just saying oh draw a pixel and stuff what we should be able to do is we should be able to get a color so I'll have a vector 4f I'll call min color and that'll be left dot get color and also vector 4f max color which should equal right dot get color and there's a lot of ways you could interpolate this yeah I'm gonna do it the lazy way so I'm gonna have some float lerp amount which starts out equal to zero and some float lerp step and this is gonna be 1 over 1.0 f over x max minus x min cast to a float And there so every time for the loop I'm gonna say lerp mount plus equals lerp step and in here I'm gonna have some vector 4f color so that our actual color we're gonna use it a pixel and that'll equal min color dot lerp to max color with lerp amount and there so with that 
all I have to do now is calculate the actual colors. So some byte R. I'm actually not going to use alpha here. I'm just going to use RGB. So R color dot get x times 255.0 because this is in the range of 0 to 1. So this times 255. And I'm going to add 0 0.5. So that way it will round properly when I cast it to an int. And actually, can I cast directly to a byte? I think I might be able to. So let's try that out. So R, G, and B, X, Y, and Z. There. So all I have to do now is in draw pixel. I'm going to use the R and G and B whoop, and B. There. And if I build and run, we should see something different. Like this. So this is an indicator that something is not quite working as it should. So yeah, one moment. Okay, and I just made a few fairly simple errors. Draw pixel takes parameters in A, B, G, R order, not R, G, B, A order. So if you correct that, things start behaving a lot more sensically but also in gradients. I made a slight algebra error. Not in DC over DX, this is perfectly fine, but in DC over DY. This should actually be in the numerator, those should be X's, not Y's. So X0 minus X2 minus C1 minus C2 times X1 minus X2. So yeah, that's why things were behaving a little bit that's one of the reasons things were behaving a little bit wonky. So I've refactored my color steps. This is the same thing I used to have right here. This is what I used to have for decolor. And this is the same thing I used to have with decolor, except now it's with X's and not Y's, because that's what it should be for the Y step. And if you do all that and build and run, you'll see a rotating pyramid with interpolated colors across the entire face. And that is awesome. There's only one more thing you might want to do here. And that is, technically the colors are still slightly off. You probably don't really notice the difference. But right here, what are we doing? We're clamping x from some floating point value to some integer value. So there's some distance between x men and, well, left.getx. So we need another x pre step. So I'm going to create x pre step. It's going to be x min minus left dot get x. And for min color, I'm going to have the get color. And I'm going to add x pre step dot mole. Well, really, what I'm going to have eventually is gradients as a parameter. And I'm going to be doing gradients dot get color x step dot mol x pre step. And there, and I'm going to do the same process for both min color and max color. So all I have to do now is have gradients as a parameter. So that'll be there. This will need to pass in gradients, which means this also needs gradients as a parameter. And all I have to do now is pass it in. And we should hardly notice the difference. But if I build and run, there you go. Now things are just slightly more aligned and slightly more what they're supposed to be. And although this is a lot more interesting than having just a flat colored triangle, it still seems like we can do a bit more. How could we take something like this and maybe, I don't know, draw a texture on it or something? Find out next time on the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.